starts today. Big data, smart mobility, emerging trends galore. The Smart Community Podcast is what you're looking for. In this episode of the Smart Community Podcast, I'm back with another episode of the podcast that brings together multiple guest answers to the question, where to next for smart cities and communities? And this time, I'm sharing with you the answers from December guests, plus a number of our guests from earlier in 2019. First, you'll hear from Pete Rafferty of episode 113, Victor Ferreira from episode 106, Cornelia Leber Benchiton and Mark Barlow from episodes 114 and 115, Chad Bernardo from episode 145, James Pete from episode 146, Karen Kaur from episode 147, Paolo Galeli from episode 148, and Nathaniel Mason from episode 149. December has been a spotlight on the regions for the podcast. And all guests, including the ones from earlier in 2019, stress the importance of humans and the people in the regions and in all of our communities. The themes that come through in all guest answers here are collaboration, connectivity, inclusion and engagement. As the smart community conversation matures and as smart initiatives start to scale up, the guests all agree that we need to focus more on what really brings value, what's really solving problems and what actually is bringing outcomes that are important for the local community while balancing the support from government, opportunities provided by technology, and the connection with other communities, both nationally and globally. There's also a strong theme of both informed and engaged citizens and diverse, inclusive communities in this episode. Several guests make the point that we must be working towards more inclusive, collaborative societies that recognise and embrace diversity are made up of informed and engaged citizens who help create better outcomes for us all. As we know, it's about the people at the centre, not the hype and not the technology. At the end of this episode, the last guest, Nathaniel, turns the question on me. So the episode finishes with me sharing where I think smart cities and communities will go next, especially with regard to local councils and regional communities. So who you will hear from again, Heath Rafferty, Victor Pereira, Cornelia levy Benchiton and Mike Ballow, Chad Renato, James Pete, Karen Kaur, Paolo Galeli and Nathaniel Mason. As always, we hope you enjoy listening to this episode as much as we enjoyed making it. Where to next for smart communities? Um, festivals. Ah. <laughs> imagine, imagine you could have a smart city festival that um, the public was as excited about as they are a music festival. I reckon, so I'd like to set a uh, a little yardstick of um, of success for smart cities. If if we can have people whose livelihood does not depend on the smart city, actually talking about the smart city with excitement um, and and about an upcoming showcase or a festival or a smart city display or something or other, then I think we can consider um, the smart city movement uh, as successful a success so uh that's what yeah. i'd like to see i love that can there be music as well absolutely yep <laughs> smart music even <laughs> well it's going to be amazing i can't wait for you to organize that and me to attend <laughs> i'll get right onto it <laughs> where to next for smart cities and communities uh, actually there's a lot of uncertainty about the smart cities and communities right now uh, that's i can come back to the, the beginning. So we can understand the cities and communities as a, a living organism, like a, it's not a static thing. So cities evolved for good and for bad. They can do things in one good direction and do things in the wrong direction. Communities also if the same. So we can keep telling people that you're doing it wrong. But if there's one people doing the same this, you won't be considered. So the probability is that we need to find the right platform for everyone has a voice and a be understood. What happened in the past shows us that these people that are totally not satisfied or some of them are never satisfied no matter what, but they need to be considered and need to be heard. And sometimes they are not heard in their own community, so they leave. That's one of the reasons that people leave 
from um, small communities, for example. If someone has developed some taste for different things and, and is different from the, what the rest of the community accepted, so they will put it aside so people will leave and they will go to big cities and um, different communities where they are more tolerant, open, and uh, they accept difference. I'm talking about uh, specific things that uh, made people to move around the world, made what Amsterdam is right now, uh, made what uh, cities like New York, cities uh, in, the, in the, the old times, cities like Berlin, cities like even Lisbon, people move uh, because they have different uh, religion um, practice. They have... Uh, like characteristics and... Characteristics, yeah. Yeah, even, even uh, if someone is homosexual, someone is and likes to hear, hear metal and rock and roll or whatever, and uh, someone who has tattoos, someone who has piercings. So sometimes they don't feel accepted in their own communities and they have to leave and they find their own community. So I think one of the secrets we will have to experience in the future for our small communities specifically, and that's why I'm focused right now, is that we need to find a way uh, that they keep these people, these rebel people, these people that can make a difference uh, for them future, for their, for themselves. They keep them in their community, they accept it, they become more tolerant and they can improve the future of the city together. Uh, that requires a lot of uh, effort and sometimes it's very, very hard to make it, especially in uh, small communities and uh, conservative communities. Uh, and, uh, that's what I'm talking about. And we need this. We need this because that's the secret for evolution. That's a mix of the ones who have the ideas and the ones who have executed. And uh, the ones who have ideas sometimes have a lot of crazy ideas, but the world is made of crazy ideas. Where to next for smart cities and communities? Well, as Cornelia said, part of the, the major challenge now is integrating diverse generations. We, smart cities really are multi-generational, and we need to address those multi-generational challenges and opportunities directly. We can't just keep pretending that cities are just old people and young people. It's much more complicated than that. So I would add that to, we, you know, we've done a pretty good job in the last 60 years of at least talking about the need for racial, ethnic, and gender diversity. And that now we need to start talking about generational, yes, not equality, but diversity. And that's the challenge. The challenge is blending not only people from different parts of the world, but people from different eras and people who look at the world differently because they are of different ages. And it's a wonderful thing that nobody has really thought about very much, which is that lots of people are living now to be in their past 100, in which the number of centenarians is increasing dramatically. My mom just had her 89th birthday, and we are seriously expecting her to hit 100. You know, in the old days, this wasn't an issue. Now it is. And it's a good issue to have, but it also, as you know, raises lots and lots of other issues, such as mobility and accessibility and economic inclusion. So there's just a lot there. I just want to add in terms of where to next for smart cities is I think there needs to be and there is already a big push on education because we need smart citizens, smart people to live in smart cities. So it has to start early with our youth, with education, with teaching people how to be digital uh, teaching our children how to achieve the goals that we want to achieve in a smart city. For instance, I understand that over by Uzoe in Australia, there is a model waste management uh, systems in place. And the circ being a part of the circular economy is important. I've heard that the educational system in Australia teaches kids right from the get-go the importance about recycling and good waste management and that everything works very efficiently simply because kids are primed from the very beginning when they're in school. Similarly, as a model and an example, we could look at Singapore and their educational system is so primed for teaching people about not wasting water, a very precious resource in Singapore. Singapore would not be Singapore without water and without the way they save water recycle and have very advanced processes for recapturing and recycling water. But it all begins with being water conservationists 
in the home and through the education in school. So education is a very, very important part of what I see in the future. Mm. No, I totally agree. So many of these things also, because we keep getting back to this notion that the uh, smart city, smart community are systems of systems. So many of these uh, solutions and tools are integrated. And as Cornelia said, they must be interoperable. Again, that's something that's a topic for a whole other show, the importance of open source and open platforms. Because uh, what you definitely don't want in a smart city is vendor lock-in. You know, that was kind of like the first generation of smart cities was, uh, you know, hi, I'm from Microsoft or Cisco or IBM, and I'm going to tell you how to do this. And then if you wanted to innovate something or if you wanted to change out or swap out part of the system, you couldn't do it because uh, you had to wait for IBM, Microsoft, Cisco, or name your large vendor to upgrade the software. That can't be part of the smart city landscape. You know, it has to be interoperable. It has to be continuously improved. You know, we need to apply lean, agile thinking. We need to apply design thinking. So it's a whole different way of looking at governance and a whole different way of looking at citizen engagement because it's all, instead of, you know, thinking in in five-year or 10-year cycles, we're thinking more in like in software cycles, which at this point there is like every two weeks. Yeah, exactly. I think interoperability is so important for people and for systems and all those things to fit together. And I like interoperability in the sense that it doesn't mean that every system or every person has to be the same and then we all come together and talk the same language. It's actually about we realize that those things are all different, but then when they come together, we can speak on equal terms. So I think interoperability in a human sense as well as the system sense is key for a smart city to be successful or to be a smart city, I guess. Yes. Mm, yes. So where to next for smart cities and communities? Uh, again, I'll, I'll go on the, on the culture side and the community side. I do see more collaboration. I see more working together both within a region and across regions. I see the connectivity happening at the social level. I see digital enabling a lot of that. Uh, and I see more global from day one, getting that global connectivity through relationships all of this comes down to people and relationships. The technology means nothing without that. I and mean, we talk about smart cities and you can be really, really intelligent as an individual, but not be very smart at all. Uh, so I think a smart community knows how to work together and leverages the technology to facilitate relationships to get a better outcome for more people rather than uh, just having a, a few really smart people try to come out on top. So I think more people working together and being connected both at a local, national, and global scale. Where to next for smart cities and communities? Well, I think we're very much on the edge of a significant jump in maturity as we scale up projects all around the country. And I think with that scale, it's a pretty steep learning curve. It's easy enough to manage 10 sensors doing a thing. It's a little bit more difficult once you get to thousands and more than that. I think that there will be probably some significant and maybe quite public failures along the way, but also a focus on what is adding adding value and what isn't. So, you know, as with everything, and certainly we, we want to, you know, fail fast and all those sorts of good approaches, but potentially there are going to be some failures as things start to scale. But the important thing is that we keep on going. We don't pull back, but we keep on going. We look for where there is value being added. It was just a shiny thing that actually doesn't add value. So I think that things are going to get a lot clearer in its sort of near term. Yeah, I agree. I think our shiny attachment syndrome or whatever we're going to call it will fade and that real value adding and return on investment, particularly for councils, like whatever that looks like, because some will be efficiency, some will be, you know, dollars, some will be community benefits, those type of things. That'll, yeah, I'm really excited, actually. It should be good. Where to next for smart communities? Mm, well, I think what would be really cool would be um, to get some smart community techo people with some of the communities that I'm working with as an example and have just, I don't know, have a chat about or discussions about what are the challenges in these local communities and what technologies are out there that can support that? I think that would be fascinating, um, that linking the everyday person with the, the technology and what's possible for the future I think would be real exciting. I don't know if there's much of that being done at the moment. You probably have more of an idea than me, 
but I haven't seen too much of it necessarily in this region where I am from. So that's really interesting. And I guess, yeah, linking the everyday person, you know, the work that you do, I guess, gathering those things that are really important and then putting it to the social entrepreneurs or even like local school groups or whatever that do like a computer science class or something like that and bringing those different disciplines together I think in regional areas I mean I know some stuff like that is happening around the place but I'm not sure what to what scale so I think that sounds really exciting maybe it's something we could do together maybe yeah let's keep talking about that (laughs) well where to next for smart cities and communities yeah, certainly, I would, as I was saying before, they are tuned to local. I think communities develop best in small context, confronting each other on real proposals and problems. So we need to talk about this localization. And I strongly believe that it's correct to talk about localization because, uh, as I was saying before, that in local context, communities grow better. But it is clear, as I said before, that at government level, it's necessary to encourage uh, interconnection between these communities and and make them thrive. So I think this is... This is next? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm, No, that's awesome. I think that local focus is really important, but then also realizing, you know, we have access to a global market and and from a, you know, small city or a town or a region understanding that but then also using that to our advantage but then on a local scale actually going well what makes this place my place or a place that people want to be and really honing in on that is is really key yeah 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 sure so where to next for smart communities oh lots more conversations though i think (laughs) to just keep on sharing finding ways to try things and not letting each other make the same mistakes. I think that's the, one of the most important things that we can do at the moment while we're all finding our way and something that we, you know, there's always new things. We're always trying new things, but it's really important that as we try them, we kind of draw that line in the sand and go, Hey guys, don't go that way. Come, come this way. We'll, we'll explain it on the way around. And so I think ethics and morals and data are all things that we need to keep talking about. You mentioned that too. Yeah. Certainly keen to, to keep getting those stories out here. Where do you want to go next? Mm, where do I want to go next? I think exactly like you were saying, continue to work together and realize that we don't have all the answers and also not trying to find the answers before we've done the, like the journey, I guess, of that. I struggle with, you know, wanting to know the answer, but before you do the project, you already know the answer. Whereas that's not how it is (laughs) in this space. It's a startup mentality, I think, as well, to bring some of that thinking in as well. And I think particularly for local government, what I want to do is really help them kind of start to do that and have a have a status of where they are now, take that stock take of go, well, and it doesn't really matter where we are now because we can always improve things. But I think councils and I guess we all get overwhelmed with the amount of information available, the amount of technology available, the amount of things that we are told that we need and that we should buy and that if we miss out and like FOMO is rampant in all aspects. And so I think, yeah, just, I guess, having these practical conversations, which is what I plan to continue to do, and then doing some really deep research as well. And, you know, mentioning the morals and the ethics and the data, that's something I plan to dive really deep into because that's the next stage. I think, you know, we talked about the the hype and the buzz and all that kind of stuff, but now it's like, well, as a citizen, like you said, we're customers of this whole thing we're not just practitioners or you know local government or whatever we are customers of this and if we don't take control of what we're what's happening and what's we're doing in this space then we are handing over that license to somebody else and i think we might make the same decisions but if we're informed and we know why we're making those decisions or you know we're comfortable with that value exchange of our data or whatever then that's fine but at the moment i feel like we're we're kind of kept in the dark of what is happening and it's kind of, uh, we're told that it's too complicated so we won't understand it, which is one of the reasons I just get involved in these things because it's like, well, I'm not super, you know, I'm an engineer, I guess, but at the end of the day, like I'm not super technical or have lots of, you know, have been coding for my whole life or anything like that. But that doesn't mean that I can't understand what my data is being used and not used for. And I, I feel like if we did, know that, that we'd probably be a little bit uncomfortable, um, particularly big tech companies. 
And it's not to say it's right or wrong at the moment, although, you know, but we need to know. So then we can actually go, oh yeah, well, I'm, I'm cool with that. That's fine. Also, I think, you know, from you and I, we might be okay with it, but somebody that's in a more vulnerable situation than us might not be. And they should have a choice to not be participating in something like that. So I'm kind of, you know, being a bit cryptic, but I feel like it's something that I'm <laughs> planning to dive really deep into and sharing that as well, because there's no point in me just knowing it. I really want to share that and with people that aren't involved in this space too, and, and getting people to really think about these things because I'm not smarter than anybody else. I just are getting involved. So that's all we need to do. Yeah. So no, you can't know everything about everything. We need to surround ourselves with the diversity of people who can provide different inputs and different opinions. And yeah, absolutely conversations we need to have. Yeah, totally. The Smart Community Podcast is brought to you by My Smart Community. If you're looking for support in podcast strategy and production, workshop design and facilitation, or communication and media advisory, get in touch. Email hello at mysmart.community or head to www.mysmart.community. Thanks so much for listening to the Smart Community Podcast. Show notes for this episode and all other episodes are available on our website, mysmart.community dot community slash podcast if you have any questions for us or any of our guests you can email hello at mysmart.community you can also find us on the socials we are on linkedin and twitter at smartcomhq that's com with two m's if you are enjoying the podcast please hit subscribe so you never miss an episode And we would love for you to leave us a rating and review at wherever you listen. This really helps us reach more ears and eyes. So thank you for your support. As always, we hope you enjoyed listening to this episode as much as we enjoyed making it. The Smart Community Podcast is what you're looking for.